How many kinds of sweet flowers grow in an Recuperating from their previous adventure, Hugo's House of Horrors, Hugo and Penelope travel to Europe in the quiet charm of the English countryside where they have just arrived at the secluded cottage of Hugo's great uncle Horace. We meet them in the hall where they are met by the maid, a saucy looking French maid welcomes you. Bonjour, Hugo et Penelope. I have placed your bags in the room upstairs. It is the third floor in the rear. S'il vous plaît. You go upstairs now, please? I think you must be tired after your long flight, no? We see you in a little while, yes? Penelope starts making her way upstairs. I'm really tired after our long flight, Hugo, says Penelope as she walks toward the bed. Why don't you get a book from the bookcase and read while I have a little snooze, she continues. Watch Penelope sleep. Of course you don't. All right, grab book. As you grasp the book, you hear a low rumbling noise as the bookcase starts to move. Oh dear, it looks like Hugo has disappeared into a secret chamber behind the bookcase. Whatever next? Meanwhile, sweet Penelope sleeps on. Time passes. A noise wakens Penelope from her slumbers. A heated argument appears to be going on in the room next door. Wondering briefly where Hugo is, you decide to get up and investigate what all the commotion is about. You see a light shining through the keyhole of the door over to the left. Look through key keyhole. Okay. Oh look, it's Great Uncle Horace. Who's that he's arguing with? <laughs> Penelope is so shocked by what she has just witnessed that she completely faints. After a little while, she comes around. All is quiet now. Well, Poor great uncle Horace, it appears that there is a murderer in this house. So now, sweet Penelope, your mission is clear. To find out who murdered great uncle Horace and bring them to justice. By the way, where did Hugo disappear to? You really should look around this room first. Take book. You were in Great Uncle Horace's study. Look through drawers. Opening the desk drawer reveals a book of matches. Take matches. Call police. You pick up the phone and dial the police. Just as you get through, you're about to tell your story. The line goes dead. Look at desk. You find nothing of interest inside. Talk to bird. What? What? Pretty birdie. Pretty birdie. What are you doing with that knife? Stop it. Ah! Squawk! Sit in chair. Open. 
Well, that door's already open, so let's go toward that first. Climb in, dumbwaiter. You get into the dumbwaiter and press the switch. The dumbwaiter descends to the kitchen below. Open cupboard. Opening the cupboard reveals a clove of garlic. Take garlic. All right, let's get out of here. Oh shit. Whoa there. Don't get too close to the Venus fly traps. Titty. Oh dear. You wandered too close to one of the Venus fly traps. Now you'll never rescue Hugo and solve the who done it. Pit boxes, how do they work? Take magnifying glass. Look, you are standing in a field by a stream. There's a little bridge across the stream. You notice some wild catnip plants growing here and there. Take catnip. Drop matches. Take matches. Drop matches. Take matches. Drop match. One eternity later. Take matches. Drop matches. Take matches. Yeah, I'm a pro at this. Whoa there, don't get too close to those ferocious looking bees. Oh fuck this. Well, I couldn't find anything over there, so uh, let's look inside the shed. The gardener sees you. He appears to be holding a pair of pliers, which he quickly thrusts into his pants as if to hide them. He speaks. Oh, my, you're a pretty little thing, and no mistake. What say you close the door, huh? That will make things nice and private. <laughs> Closer, my dear. Nah. Kissy kissy. No. I find that befuddling. Eat garlic. It would appear the gardener is not too fond of garlic. Your terrible garlic breath seems to have gotten the better of him. Before you start hitting those buttons, a word of explanation. Since you don't know what they do, you won't know what you've done till you see what they do. Confused? I'm sure you'll soon get the hang of it. Push green button. Push 
blue button. You hear a faint rumbling noise in the distance. Oh, the gate's open. Oh boy, it's this part. Pick up gun. <laughs> You're in a maze of twisty little paths which are all alike. You can also see a bell. Take bell. Well, that was fun. Throw matches. I fear that if you were to do that, then they would certainly land in the water and become rather soggy. Of course, soggy matches are no use to anyone, so I won't let you do that. Looks like one of those buttons I pushed in the shed turned on the, the bug zapper. <laughs> suck it. There's a strange old man sitting on the mushroom in the middle of the field. He looks curiously familiar. As he sees you, the old man's face twists into an evil smile. He waves his wand and suddenly you are gripped by an irresistible force pulling you toward him. Over. The old man speaks. Ah, welcome to my field, my fine young friend. I have been waiting for you. I am well aware of your quests and I would hasten you on your way. However, before I let you pass, I must satisfy myself that you have the experience to handle the dangers that lurk through yonder pathways. Tis true I am familiar to you, though our paths may not have e'er crossed. Thy friend Hugo didst answer my simple questions in a different time and place. For you, sweet Penelope, no trifling questions or petty riddles. For you, I have in store the most awesome imponderables imaginable. <laughs> Art thou ready? Your first subject will be geology. Specifically, I shall be asking questions relating to plants and ferns of the Silurian period of the Paleozoic era. Here is the first question. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> While the old man is clear of throat, you seize your chance. Not having Hugo's patience, you decide to take matters into your own hands. Grabbing the old man's wand, you smartly whack him over the head with it and carry on your merry quest. with that snake. Drink bottle. You feel a tingling sensation for a moment, then it subsides. Ouch, that nasty snake just bit you. Can't hurt me because I drank the antidote.
You are standing outside the doghouse. Take stick. Throw stick. Wee fetch boy. Look in doghouse. There's a stick of dynamite in the doghouse. Take dynamite. All right, back to this snake. Yeah, you're not gonna get me. Oh, hey, a phone booth. You pick up the phone and dial the emergency number for the police. Hello, this is the local police. Officer Higgins at your service. How may I help you? You explain the situation to Officer Higgins in great detail. After you finish, he says, A murder, huh? Very well. Listen, I can't come over right now since I'm rather busy on a case. I'll meet you in the living room at the house at 6 o'clock, okay? You agree and put the phone down, but how to get to the living room? Hmm. On an impulse, you pick up the phone again and start to dial the first number that comes to your head. Realizing that would be rather futile, you hang up the phone again. Look, graffiti. The graffiti says, for an out-of-this-world experience, dial 1-800-333-HUGO. Dial. Dial what number? 1-800-333-HUGO. Or You feel a strange sensation as the walls of the phone box grow hazy and seem to recede. You hear a strange, pulsating, throbbing noise, and your head starts to spin. If you didn't know better, you'd say the phone box appeared to be in motion. Eventually, the throbbing stops, and the feeling of motion ceases. You gingerly peer out of the door. shot. It bounced off the rock and struck home. Nice shooting, Parker. I don't know what the point of any of that was. Climb down well. Okay, down we go. Drop dynamite. Light dynamite. Climb rope. Kaboom! You hear a muffled explosion and the ground shudders up for a moment beneath your feet. Climb down. Climb down well. Alright, where am I at? This is an awfully, awfully elaborate tunnel for, for being under a well. Take lamp. How do I get across there? Let's see, maybe just... 
Oh dear, how careless. You fell down into the chasm. Now you'll never rescue Hugo and solve the whodunit. Okay, there we go. Take banana. And out we go, finally. All right, so what's in here? See what's up this ladder. At the top of the ladder is a trap door. Although it doesn't appear to be locked or bolted, despite your best efforts, you were unable to budge it. Rub lamp. <gasps> Talk to Genie. Greetings, Mistress. I am the Genie of the Lamp. Don't get too excited, I don't do any of those three wishes kind of things. However, I'm decidedly hungry and I'd do almost anything for a banana. Especially a moldy one. Give banana to Genie. Oh, thank you, mistress. To show his gratitude, the Genie climbs up the ladder and with a mighty shove bursts open the trap door for you. Open safe. <laughs> Don't you think that number's been a little overworked? Okay, so 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 the walkthrough I was reading. The walkthrough I was reading neglected to mention that I'm supposed to get a screwdriver from the uh, from the doctor in that Doctor Who place. So all the way back there, I guess. Shoot self. Sheesh, you missed. One eight hundred to my dick. <laughs> the strange man introduces himself. I am the doctor. Doctor who, you ask? Never mind, he replies. I want you to take this for saving my life. He hands you a curious device which he describes as a sonar screwdriver. It may come in handy sometime. Now please return the way you came. Goodbye and good luck. Okay, open safe with screwdriver. Amazing! Are you sure you haven't done this before? Anyway, the safe is empty apart from one solitary document which you open up. At the top of this document is the word will. Read will. You have found the will of great uncle Horace. The date on it appears to be very recent. Most of it is in legalese and rather fine print. Reading further, with the aid of your magnifier, you get to the inheritance. Shock horror. It appears that great uncle Horace has left a fortune to Hugo. So I'm back in the house now. It's the maid. She appears to be looking intently at something. Sensing your presence, she deftly places whatever she was looking at into the cupboard and turns to face you. Ah, Madame Pelinope, you startled me. I hope you enjoyed your little rest. Très bien. Now, did I ever tell you the story of when I was, how you say, the can can dancer at the Moulin Rouge in my hometown Paris? No, we look just like this, blah, 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 blah. 
Yeah, whatever. Look at cat. You see nothing very interesting about it. Rub catnip on bell. All right, I went back for the catnip. Let's do this. Rub catnip on fucking bell. The cat is starting to look very interested now, but not quite enough to investigate. Give bell to cat. That definitely has caught the cat's attention. Slowly at first, then more and more excitedly, the cat starts to play with it. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, excuse-moi, madame. I hear great Uncle Horace ringing for me. Don't go away, I'll be right back. Open cupboard. Searching the cupboard, you find what the maid was hiding. It appears to be an old photo album. You pick it up. Take bell. It's the cook. She seems to be holding a knife which is dripping with blood. She speaks. Ah now, Miss Penelope, so you caught me in the act of preparing dinner. I've been cutting up some dead beef, so I have, and you'd be savoring the delights of my Yankee pot roast later tonight. Open door. It's Great Aunt Hester. She greets you. My dear Penelope, it's so good to see you. Why, I was just thinking about you. Come over here. Now, won't you join me in a little drinky-boo? You must try my special homemade elderberry wine. I guarantee it will knock you off your feet. Would you like a glass? Yes. Good girl. Wait a second while I fix it. Read letter. Quietly opening it, you quickly scan it. It appears to be a letter from Hester's attorney concerning the life insurance policy on Great Uncle Horace. Feeling rather uncomfortable about reading other people's mail, you return it to its envelope without reading any further. Here you go. Bottoms up, as we say. Hester hands you the drink and you gulp it down in one. Hooey! That drink certainly had a kick to it. You hand your glass back to Hester, who takes a swig of her own and continues. Ah, that hit the spot. <clears throat> now, did I ever tell you about the time I worked in a French wine yard as the head wine taster? No? Well, it was like this. Blah, 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 blah. Open door. You're in Cousin Harry's organ room. Talk to Harry. Oh, hello. What's that you say? A murder? Oh my, oh dearie me. Poor great Uncle Horace. Tee, oh my. <laughs> Cousin Harry lapses into uncontrollable laughter. Oh. 
There's the old Bobby. Who done it? So now for the moment of truth. It appears Officer Higgins has gathered all the occupants of the house in order to sort this matter out. He speaks to you. Well now, since we can't find Great Uncle Horace, we really can't prove what you say is true. He looks around at the others and continues. Since there are apparently no other witnesses, we really don't have much to go on. You interrupt Officer Higgins excitedly to tell him that you think you know who the killer is. Suddenly, everyone in the room goes quiet. Higgins' eyes open wide, and he looks at you with a curious expression. Well then, Penelope, we're all waiting. Perhaps you'd like to tell us the name of the killer. Well, who done it? Here's what really happened. In order to know the true nature of this crime, we have to think back to this morning. Great Uncle Horace recently updated his will, leaving much of his fortune to Hugo. Around the same time, Great Aunt Hester had taken out a life insurance policy on Great Uncle Horace. Later, when Hugo and I arrived at the house, the maid seemed to be in an awful hurry to get us upstairs. I was tired from our flight, so I took a nap while Hugo decided to read a book in the meantime. But as it turned out, the bookcase in the guest room was actually a secret door to Great Uncle Horace's study. Wandering around for a bit, Hugo happened upon Great Uncle Horace himself, along with the culprit. The two were in the midst of an argument. When the killer took out a knife and then stabbed Great Uncle Horace. In order to silence Hugo, The killer then locked him in a room somewhere in this house, so that they could take their time deciding what to do with him. But unfortunately for the killer, Great Uncle Horace's pet bird heard everything and repeated his last words. And so, try as the killer might to continue about their days if nothing had happened, the bird served as unmistakable evidence that a murder happened in that room. Isn't that right, Cousin Harry? Cousin Harry shouts out, Brilliant! Brilliant! You've successfully deduced who the killer was. You see, as soon as you told me what happened, I realized. I knew all along, but I never thought you'd guess. So after that feat of deduction, you should find the final puzzle a piece of cake. We return to Hugo for the real conclusion of the story. Take paper. Read paper. You glance at the paper. Looks like someone's been doing the crossword. Only one clue remains unsolved. A valuable food fish of the family Cl Clupia Day. Seven letters. Take pencil. Slide paper under door. Push pencil through keyhole. You hear a soft thud as the key drops out of the keyhole onto the paper underneath. Gently drawing the paper back into the room, you see the key come to. Hardly able to contain your excitement, you unlock the door and step through. Oh look, it's Great Uncle Horace. He greets you. Ah, oh, there you are, my boy. Where on earth have you been hiding, huh? I've been searching high and low for you. I have a favor to ask. I've been rehearsing my new play up in my study with your cousin Harry. Trouble is, Hugo, we're a bit stuck on the murder scene. I play the victim and Harry plays the murderer, but we need someone to play the part of the investigator. I was rather hoping you'd help. The end. Till we meet again.